in a resurrected state. Anybody know Jesus? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And this is the promise. And most of you know this verse by heart. But tonight, we're going to experience it. Jesus said, but you, turn to your neighbor and say, hey, it's you. Look at him and say, it's your night. Just look at him and say, do you really believe it? If you believe it, you can receive it. It's time to make room. Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That word shall in the Greek is a command. You can't stop it if it's a command from heaven. What's the key on our side? We have to open the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open, I will come in. This is not a John 3.16 message tonight. Acts 2.4, no more. This is an Acts 1.8 message. And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth. The word for martyr. Or the word for witnesses is the word for martyr. It's the Greek word in the koine which means martus. It means this power that's coming upon you will empower you, enable you to be willing to be martyred for Christ. Let me share something with you. I can tell you whether or not you've got that power in you by a couple of identifying marks. Are you willing to die for his name when people begin to speak ill of Christians or Christianity? Are you willing to die to yourself and not, not concerned about what they'll say when you take a stand for Christ? If you're not willing at this level, you're not willing to die for him on the next level. This is where the rubber meets the road. What you gonna do when they come for you, Christian? They're coming. They came for them on the day of Pentecost because they were hiding in an upper room because they were scared to death. There was 120 of them, men and women. Let me ask you a question. How many of them had been had an encounter with Jesus? Multitudes were healed. 5,000 were fed, plus women and children. On two separate occasions that we know of. Water to wine. The maim, the lame, the hall, the blind were healed. How many were waiting on the day of Pentecost for the power? See, you can get a touch from Jesus and still not have the power. Acts 10, 38 says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus, Luke 4, 1, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost was led or driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. He ate nothing. And he overcame the temptations during a time of prayer and fasting alone in the wilderness where God gets the wild in us out. And after he overcame the temptations, this is what it says in Luke 4, 14. And Jesus, who was filled with the Holy Spirit in Luke 4, 1, says this. He returned in the power of the Spirit and he went about doing good. And he began to heal and a great fame spread abroad about him. You may have been filled with the Holy Ghost, but have you yet been released in the power? Have you been endued with power from on high? Do the sick get healed when you lay hands on people? Do creative miracles happen? 
Do demons come out when you walk by and you recognize activity in people? You might have the discerning of spirits, but do you have the power to deal with the spirits that are in them that you discern? You might walk by the mirror and see one. Sometimes deliverance starts at home. You can practice on yourself. Come out in the name of Jesus. Tell the truth and shame the devil. See, I don't know your thought lives, unless the Holy Spirit reveals it. But I don't know your thought lives, but you do. And we love to preach messages to other people. But sometimes you've got to preach to the man or the woman in the mirror. And once you get delivered and you've overcome it in your life by the power of the Holy Ghost, when you walk around to other people that have what you used to have as a problem, instead of being judgmental to them because you're in abstinence, you're in abstinence, but you're not in deliverance. You're clipping down the dandelions every day, doing sin maintenance. But only Jesus can go down and get them by the root. They, once you get them by the root, they don't pop back up. And let me share something else with you. When you get truly delivered, let me share with you what happens. When you see somebody bound up in that same thing, you look and you say, Oh Lord, have compassion on him. Because he had compassion on you. When you're really not delivered, but you're abstaining, you're saved, but you wish you weren't. You're abstaining, but you're not delivered. Got sin management. Get real religious. You see, you get victory for a little while. You see somebody else in the same problem you're abstaining from. You're judgmental because you're self-righteous. But when you get delivered, you know you didn't deliver yourself. It was an encounter with the living God who came into the cell with you and set you free from the chains in an instant. Religion will tell you, you can do it. Just try harder. Relationship says, I've done it for you, son. I've done it for you, daughter. I was hung up for your hang-ups. I can touch with the feeling of your infirmities. It's not your ability. Remember, it's your availability. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Fill it up and make me whole. We're going to empty ourselves out before the night's over. There's going to be an invitation for that. And there's going to be an impartation. Something you didn't pay a price for, you're going to get for free. Let me share something with you. Impartations can come for free. You'll pay a price after you get one. Do you really want it? Or are you content? Or are you in a place where you're satisfied with what you've got, or are you dissatisfied and you want more of him? <laughs> you remember the story when, when Jesus was about to be born and, and, and Mary and Joseph, when they, they went because there was a census and they went to the inn. But there was no room at the inn. You know, years later, I imagine that innkeeper wishes he'd made room. Don't wait for years and regret that you didn't make room when Jesus was passing by and he wanted to come in. But you were busy 